Good afternoon. I'm Daniel Lindgren and I'm the president of OccuScience and I'm reporting to you on our afternoon of day one at the Association for Vision and Ophthalmology Research in New Orleans. And today I just want to give a quick update on what we've done. First of all, very uh, revolutionarily, we have videoed most of what's happened here at Arvo at our booth. So we have lots of interesting discussions uh, courtesy of Bill, Ben Fox, the filmmaker, on different applications of eye research that OcuScience is doing, as well as our colleagues and friends around the world. Having something like an ERG or a system, you can check it, check your eye health as regularly as someone checks the heart with an EKG. That's what we're trying to do. I've probably had 40 ERGs. You're an you're a unusual yeah, well, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> patient that somebody's given you and you've, yeah. you've been focused on it that yeah. much. Yeah. But that's the type of volume that I would think on just a day, you know, on a regular basis, every person at risk or someone who's developing a different disease would have uh, opportunity to get access to an ERG easily. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I can understand that because the test itself can be uncomfortable. Yes. You know, and uh, I think if, if it could be simplified and, and be allowed to be a, a, a lot more accessible than being in the doctor's office per se. Right. You know, there's, uh, I do a lot of work in rare disease advocacy. And one of the big things with clinical trials now, especially with the FDA, is they also want to incorporate uh, patient reported outcomes. Yes. And this would be a way within a large patient cohort for trials that you might be able to either with them or their local optometrist set up an ability to be monitored on a more regular basis. And it would, it would also simplify the fact that when you're getting the information, it's all based out of say one smartphone, one type of smartphone. Yes. You know, versus the different instrumentation that could be an ERG machine in one doctor's office could be completely different from one in another's office. That's absolutely true. Secondly, we introduced a new product, our strobe illuminator, which is used for our fundoscope to do high resolution images that have low motion. So we can get very precise images and we're getting a lot of interesting uh, reception from our customers and potentially new customers with this technology. And then lastly, uh, we've had a really good time uh, meeting with our researchers and friends from around the world. And you will be seeing over the next few days, several interviews from um, my friends and colleagues on the research they're doing, the what they do in eye research and the why. And why it's important to the blind community and humanity in general and what we do here at Arvo. So tomorrow, we'll give you another update on day two. Thanks so much. My name is Benjamin Bacall, uh, and we are at uh, ARVO, so Association of Research and Vision Ophthalmology, the, the big uh, national meeting in eye research in uh, New Orleans. What do you do, and where are you from? Uh, I'm a retina specialist. Uh, I see patients with uh, retinal diseases. Um, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I work at the Associated Retina Consultants. Can you tell me why you first, in the first place, got interested in eye health and people's retinas? Well, it started uh, with my grandmother having macular degeneration and it affected her life. And, and I realized that was a, a very important disease, especially in people that are elderly and really appreciate their vision. So that started inspiring me. I was also very interested in genetics. And um, I was involved in a, in a research project identifying a gene for an inherited eye disease called Best disease. What's, uh, what took you to where you are today in being in Arizona with the Retinal Foundation? Well, so uh, I have a PhD in genetics. And uh, being uh, in practice, uh, in private practice in Arizona, uh, I realized that there's not a lot of research, especially basic science research going on in Arizona. So I started a nonprofit uh, in order to, to do more uh, clinical trials and do more basic research to help people with uh, both with inherited eye diseases and macular degeneration. What uh, have you learned in your time?
time that has surprised you about eyes, about people, about blindness, about eye health? Well, I, I think people are very adaptive. Uh, if you have very limited vision, that remaining vision, uh, it can surprise other people that a person, for example, is legally blind with retinitis pigmentosa, but that person may still be able to read. And that's hard for people with normal vision to understand how that's possible. And even in other conditions with decreased central vision, you still have good peripheral vision, but, but it's very hard to to you know, look at social media and read and, and recognize faces. So the vision is not uniform. So when you're educating people on that, and thank you for having part to, to understand that, what, what do you tell people about blindness and that people that are blind can still see some? How do you explain that? Well, I'm talking about different parts of the eye, uh, and the very center is important for your center vision. The peripheral uh, retina uh, is important for the for the far peripheral vision, and you use different parts of the of the retina for for different functions. Uh, and you just have to sometimes educate other people with normal vision how a person that have a, have, have decreased vision how they function, and to help. is that So what would you like to tell people that are watching this about you know, thinking about retinas or working to help people that are blind with retina care. What, what is your message to people? Well, I want people to understand that you know, they can support research in retinal diseases. There are a lot of new treatments coming out and, and with their support we can, uh, we can do more research to identify new pathways and new treatments, a new way to to slow down the progression of the diseases that, that are around. And we can also, uh, with new treatments, improve the vision. So I think there are a lot of exciting avenues to, to help people with uh, retinal diseases. I appreciate you very much. Um, can you tell us the spelling of your name, please? Tell us your name one last time and the spelling. Uh, Benjamin Bacall, B-E-N-J-A-M-I-N, -N, and last name is Bacall, B-A-K-A-L-L. I think I think uh, it's a. Come the video. Yeah, I'm here. Would you come over on this side? Okay. Oh, I'm blocking the whole way. Oh, you're good, Barbie, sir. All right. All right. Yeah. So since since uh, since I'm a retina specialist in practice, and I heard about this new device, uh, OcuScience, uh, doing ERG. It's a very low profile. It's a very quick test. I think it's an exciting new technology that I'm interested in trying out. Patients, when they hear about ERG, what, what do you think they think, you know, about taking ERG tests currently before this new technology? Well, uh, in the past, uh, patients that had tests many years ago, they tell me that it's like having a torture device placed in your eye. And, and they were having corneal abrasions and pain for days afterwards. And, and with the new technologies, I think having a more low profile, a smaller device, faster testing, it's a much easier test to do. And it's, it's more, yeah, more tolerable and you can get, get really good results very quickly. Absolutely, we're trying to do what we can to make uh, ERGs a lot less scary as than what they've been in the past. I might even myself take an ERG, maybe not this week, but definitely yeah, this year. For sure. Maybe We're going to definitely do this, Ben. We're going to do that and we'll record that for sure. I'm, yeah. I'm, going to, I'm going to see if somebody else will do one and let me watch. Yeah. Maybe even this week and then I might not be so scared because I would hear about the torture device from my friends that have taken it. And I'm like, exactly. I've yeah. been diagnosed, I'm legally blind by all measurements, but why would I go get an ERG to measure further? And that's where I've been on that most of the time. Yeah. You got to see the benefit. What is the benefit to you? That's really the key. The benefit here would be to spread the word that you can go get that tested. And if you're early in your blindness journey, you're trying to explore your eye health and stuff like that, you probably should have it done. Right, right. Earliest intervention has the best outcome. 100%. 100% of the time.
So Dan, how did you guys meet, the two of you? Well, Ben just came by the booth, and it was one of those people was, as a retina specialist who saw my smart phone ERG and immediately saw that it had great benefit that might actually help his patients. Uh, he is definitely one of those people who has grown up with ERG in the traditional way and I think uh, he sees now and I think we'll all see that there's an opportunity to try to change the paradigms and evoke a revolution is the way I keep saying it uh, to make ERG something that's able and readily available to test your retina health much more easily than it have in the past. Yeah, what, what I've seen is that current ERG technologies are cumbersome and time-consuming and there are a lot of resistance to do the test. Something that's uh, small and efficient and quick, is uh, th that's what we need. Well, as a person that's blind, I got to tell you, Doc, when I first reached out to Daniel, it's because I saw his marketing video with Sean in it. Awesome energy, these guys. It's got a family business feel the whole way. And then when I found out about the ERG handheld technology, I realized it would revolutionize people's lives like mine. So, and taking that torture device out of that stage of the blindness journey, man, that's already scary enough time. You know what I mean? Yes. So, I really appreciate the work you've been doing. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate you. Well, thank you very much. Hey, thank yeah. you, Benjamin. Yeah, thanks. That's going to turn out really nice. That's going to be a <laughs> yeah. good. Okay, good. Well, I'm happy yeah. to and send me a copy and we'll yeah. put it up on our we'll website get, too. Yeah, we'll yeah. get, we'll get yeah. it all pushed. Exactly. Hey, where do you think you're going to get all this stuff?